Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining a joint webinar between VoIP Supply and FanBill. Uh, I am your host, Brian Heyrich, here in sales at VoIP Supply, along with my cohorts from FanBill, Tommy Lee and Hector Zarita. For those of you who do not know, VoIP Supply has actually been around since 2002. Uh, we have over 125,000 worldwide customers, many of them being resellers. Uh, some of the benefits of being a reseller through VoIP Supply is uh, we have our own rental program. So if you do want to save your customers that uh, large capital expenditure up front, uh, we could qualify them and introduce them to our device as a service rental program. VoIP Supply also does provisioning. So uh, for any of your Fanville phones or devices, VoIP Supply can pre-provision all of your Fanville phones and blind ship them direct to your customer. Uh, we can even private label those phones and put your literature in the packages as, uh, as well. So VoIP Supply really becomes more of an operational partner than someone who you, you buy your uh, brown boxes from, right? Uh, refresh and reclaim. VoIP Supply also does do buybacks of old hardware. Uh, say you want to refresh your Yealink phones or your Polycom phones and buy some new Fanville phones to replace them. Uh, it is possible that VoIP Supply can get you cash back or credit towards uh, your Yealink order. On the flip side, uh, VoIP Supply from time to time does have refresh stock as well, um, offering a full one-year warranty on the items. And uh, please, any questions regarding that, I'll share my contact information at the end and um, we, we can have that one-on-one uh, -on -one together if you'd like. Um, without further ado though, I would like to uh, pass the torch over to Hector and Tommy Lee of uh, Fanville. Thanks for joining us today, gentlemen. Thanks, Brian, for the introduction and the boss. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this technical webinar programmed by our partner Boy Press Supply, which aims to show you all the details, all the technical details related to our security products and solutions. My name is Hector Zurita, software engineer for the North American and Latin region, and I am a company in college, uh, Tommy Lee, VP of Sales for the North American region, who will be helping at the end of this presentation with the question and ask bird session, okay? So without more than adding, let's start the presentation. The content that we will see during this webinar is now shown on the screen. As a first point, we will give an introduction of the fan builder phone produce developed so far and correctly available on the market. A second point, we will pay special attention to the product iTrady, which has been one of the main family door funds used in the market. Okay. Uh, there we'll see an installation guide that shows the step by step to connect and use the device uh, one is taken out of the box. As a third point, we will see the daily use operation guide, which basically refers to common scenarios where the door phone i3 is used okay with other family device for example indoor units and some models phones that car ca that are capable of raising the video um, as a four point we will talk about the steps to follow to configure the family door phone specifically basic scenarios that we stop in point three Okay, as many as to the goals, this webinar is developed so that participants uh, can get to know indeed the line of door phone products currently developed by Fanbill and that are available in the market as well as learn everything related to the quick guide of installation when the product is taken out of the box. Understand what is the, the scope that these products have in real life, okay? Focus on different scenarios of daily use and learn how to make the necessary configurations to archive edge of this world scenario strap of the web guide of the device Q simple. Family technologies, in addition to develop deeper phones uh, in its beginnings, the years has been adding new solutions to the product portfolio. 
mainly focus on SNR behavior to security. And that's when the land gets involved of door farm products, whose main characteristics in support of the six signaling protocol to allowing integration with all family performed products and thus offering integration of different solutions under a single brand. In addition to door farm products, we have also developed intercoms, indoor units, and products for painting and multipurpose in industrial environments. Today, we will talk in detail about the door farm's product line. The current portfolio of door farm is shown on the screen below. It is different models. As you can see, the first two models have similar physical characteristics, only with that portion without the use of the include camera and also with the include camera. We have the door phone I20s is that does not have a camera include and the that does have a camera include and uh, will be the video door phone. Then we have I23 is that does not have a good in camera and the I31 is that does have a good camera and will be the video door phone version. Then the video door phone model i 32 b is shown, which is characterized by behind a more robust model, the characteristic of having a ready for RFID cars, as well as it is physical characteristics made ideal for outdoors. Seeing it has IP65 protection uh, against water and dust, as well as IQ10 for anti-collision with rules, die cast, aluminum frame ideal for anti-brand protection. And the model i 3 b is shown, which could be considered the most advanced product of the door, of the door portfolio in the box so far. This model, in addition to having an RFID card reader, number K pack, and IP65 protection, and i 10 protection, it also has an LCD display on the front panel, which allows the user to obtain information in real time certain actions, for example, uh, to know when the video door phone enables the overtone phone, to know the IP associated with the device in a queue and easy, and also know the status of a firmware update product display, making it friendly for the administrator. All of these products have the ability to register up to two SIG accounts, okay? Below is a comparative table of the products that we saw in the previous slide, okay? In the case of power, all support the use of POE on their start 021A EFI and can also be connected through the uh, 12 volt, uh, one ampere power supply. In the case of the output relay, uh, used mainly to connect electric locks and make use of the ability to, of the open door. The first four models only have one outpop relay, uh, where the I32B and the I32B support two outpop relay. As I had told you, the I20s is an I23 is products do not have a build camera, build in camera, and will only have the ability to work as door phones. All other models do have a camera included and are developed as video door phones. In the case of the of the LCD display, only the model i 33 only supports support it. All 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 door uh, phones have an RFID card ready and allow aiding up to five thousand hand entries. In other words, five thousand hand users can have access to door phones through the use of RFID cards. Okay. In the case of the SP dial button used for quick and easy dialing, only the product i 3 b does not have a uh, single use the numeric keyboard to perform a specific dialing. And in the case of the numeric keyboard, only the i 3 b model does not have, okay, uh, it only makes calls throughout the speed dial bottom. Regarding the assembly, important, the entry line of door phone and video door phone have the ability to be wall mounted, okay? Um, and, the, and in the case of the i23Es and the i31s models, they also have the ability to be flush mounted. 
to provide the user with a more aesthetic installation. Okay, after now with the different models that make up the Dorfons product portfolio, we will now see the two possible scenarios where these products can work, uh, which will basically be without using a SIG server and the other scenario involving a SIG server. In the first case, as we can see on the screen, in addition to the door phone, there are also some indoor units and a video phone, all of them connect of the same line, okay? The same line network through a router that assigns IP to H1. In, the, in this case, the device will communicate only through direct IP calls. This model um, that we have here is the indoor unit I-53, okay? And this other is the indoor unit I-56A, uh, which is mainly characterized by building developed with the Android operation system. And in the case of the video door phone, of the video phone, it is uh, the I the A-22, uh, which is also developed with the, the Android operation operating system. In general, users do not require that the link to H door phone will shown when making calls. Uh, in this case, only the use of phone book shall be configured in a specific color idea signal to H door phone. Now we have on the screen the other possible war scenario where a six server is involved. In this case, all the IP products involved will register to the server as six extensions. And the calls will be managed by the SIG server at all times. Uh, here, indoor units of different models, IP phones of different models, as well as door phone and video door phones are shown located in different areas, which can be in a company, residence, or any other scenario that involves different areas. Okay, now we will see the I use in this product for different purposes. Uh, proper installation in, is important to obtain the maximum range offered by the door phone. The first thing we must do when the product is removed from the box is the physical connection. On the screen, we can see the different necessary connections. The door phone can be powered through a PoE switch, or it can also be powered through a 12 pole volt, uh, one ampere DC adapter. Through the upper relay, you can connect an electric lock for open, open door actions. This model that we see on the screen only, one outbox relay. So we call only connect an electric lock, okay? Throughout the indoor, the, the indoor exit input port, we can connect the bottom that allow to operate the open door remotely. Just be pressing the bottom, okay? As you can see, they, they are typical connections that not require great complex, complexity, okay? Below, we will see the details, electrical connections. In the case of power supply through PoE, we can use any switch that has a PoE injector, uh, specifically that works with the standard A02.1 AIF, okay? If you need to know more details regarding the recurring voltage values, when door phone is in use or not in use, you can contact us at Family Technical Support. Um, we will gladly provide you with all the details. At this point, the important thing is that the BOE injector supports the mentioned standard. The other alternative power supply is through an external DC power adapter, 12 volts and one ampere, okay, in this case, the door phone has property in the identified drive contact, so that the positive and negative coming from the, the adapter are connected. It really is a simple connection to implement. Now we see on the screen the, di the diagram to connect the electric lock in active, in active mode. Uh, the driving mode on the electric lock the, the seat decides where or not the electric lock requires recurs a uh, separate power supply. In the case of, of active move, it, it will not require an external power supply since, since it will be powered through the door phone as shown on the screen. When the device is in 
active move. Um, it can drive a maximum 12 volt, uh, 500 million per uh, switching output. So that a uh, standard electric strike or other compatible electrical appliance can be connected. When you set a team move, the output is 12 volts DC. Okay, the physical connection is displayed on the screen. In the case of passive move, uh, the use of an external power supply will be required as shown on the screen, since it will it will conduct a switching output of 12 volts and a current gravity that gives than 500 million pairs. Um, the physical connection move to the jumper is, play, is displayed on the screen. Uh, this is the default connection move, but as I indicated in the previous slide, it will not always be this way, and this will depend mainly on the technical characteristics of the electric log that is going to be integrated into the door form. For the connection of the indoor switch button, the connection is quite simple. Uh, you only have to connect the of cables uh, coming from the switch button to the jumper corresponding to the indoor exit input of the door form. Identify I and is O, a port for input and the other for the signal output. The screen shows the typical network connection. The default mode is DHCP, where the door form will obtain the IP throughout the router. The ideal is to connect the door form and the PC that the controller will use to access the web guide to the same switch. Okay, and to that uh, switch we are we are going to connect the router. Okay, regarding physical information, uh, I had told then that all door forms models are zip locked for one monitor. However, in the case of the i 23 s and the i 31 s they are they allow integration with an additional accessory known as flush mounted, which will allow the installer to obtain a more aesthetic implementation when installing the door phone. The flush mounted is an accessory that must be portioned uh, separately. That is, it is not included when the door phone is portioned. Okay. Now we will see a very interesting session um, which will allow us to have a better idea of the different war scenarios that our door phones can integrate okay, with other family products such as indoor Unix and IP phones in other words, in this session we will be able to know the real scope of these products. The first scenario shown on the screen is to the use of the speed dial button on the door phone I trading. By making use, but by making use of the peak dial button, we can program the dial name to a specific number, which can be associated, for example, with an IP video phone, which, which will be receive the audio and video in real time. It is a fairly common scenario that can be applied to calls within a SIG station using a SIG server or without the NIC for the SIG server through direct IP calls. This can be uh, applied in business, residential, and um, public areas of the, site of the city. The following scenario shown on the screen relate to the use of the K pad to make calls. Unlike uh, the previous example, that was made through the SP dial button. Okay, through the K pad. Um, the user can decide uh, to which destination to communicate, previously knowing the extension number associated with the indoor unit, according to the example shown on the screen. The stick, the stacks to make a call throughout the K-Pack are shown on the screen. Basically, the, use, uh, the user presses the asterisk K to obtain the ringtone. Mm, then he will dial the extension number he wishes to call and then press K against to generate the call. Another alternative for the call to be generated automatically after dialing the destination number is throughout the number line auction. Once the door phone recognizes the length of the dial numbers, it will automatically generate the call. This can, be, can also be applied in business environments 
and much more epicabling in residential scenarios, specifically in buildings that require direct communication with a specific apartment. In this case, uh, the ideal would be to have a six server to take advantage uh, of advanced solution, such as the forwarding of call to external numbers, numbers in case the call is not answered on the main number. External number could be the mobile, the mobile phone of the person living in the apartment. The following scenario shows the reverse process, the reverse process that is here the door phone will receive, will receive calls from different users, for example, from from calls from indoor units and from IP video phones. This scenario is used in companies and industrial areas, for example, where the user of the indoor unit or the IP phone can monitor in real time through a call what is in front of the door phone camera. In other words, it can be handled as a monitoring strategy in specific areas of a company or industry, okay? In the same way, uh, it, could, it could also be applied in a residential setting to know who is at uh, the entrance of the building as a security measure. The following message relates to the door opening on the door phone remotely through an indoor unit, okay, uh, or also from an IP video phone, or even from a mobile phone through the application developed for this purpose. This application was developed by Fanville and can be downloaded from the Fanville doc, uh, from the Fanville uh, website. Okay, its name is Fanville Door Phone App. The step, the steps to archivate this is basically to establish the call within the door phone and the remote destination. Uh, after this, after establishing the call, the user of the remote equipment others of the remote device will only have to, on, to enter the code as you said with the door opening and immediately the open door is activated. This scenario is applicable mainly in companies and residents. Here the use of RFID cards uh, to open door is shown. Later we will see how to configure this uh, in the door phone throughout the different methods. The important thing to understand in this slide is that you have the possibility the possibility uh, of opening the door in the door phone through the use of RFID cards. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, all or phone, all, uh, all, all door phones have the capacity to register or to register up uh, to give Trousan entry for the use of RFID card. This scenario is ideal for business scenarios. On the screen, we have the use of open door throughout the use of local password, where basically the user will only have to enter their password to enable access through the open door. This password can be generic or it can also be personalized for each user. The steps uh, to archivate this is to enter the associated password throughout the keypad and then press the pound K. Another alternative is to first place the location number and then associated password followed by the pound key. This second method is used by the administrator to maintain a user register basic on the location that was associated. Um, it is the default access method. However, the administrator can change, uh, it can only define the access code mode, okay? The screenshot, the configuration that, that, that the administrator must perform to archive this, as you can see, it is information associated with the user, for example, name, ID that refers to the last 10 digits of the RFID card associated with the user, a status of the card, apartment, and location that correspond to that user, phone number, number card for waiting phone, number uh, associated access code. This scenario is widely used in companies that require strict attendance control. The next slide shows the use of the indoor exit button to archivate the open door. This option is already enabled by default. That is, uh, after making the physical connection, the button will be ready to be used. It is a scenario used in commercial stores and in residence to enable you 
to Etsy, for example. Now we will see how to make the configurations through the door phone web guide in order to implement this common integration scenarios that we saw a few minutes ago. The first configuration case shown on the screen server. The main thing in this case is to register the SIG station of the door phone and the other device that will interact with the door phone. For example, in your units and IP video phones. In the case of SIG registration, the same procedure is carried out on the three device shown on the screen. For the SIG registration, it will only be required to know the following information associated with the SIG server. Domain and associated SIG port. Some SIG servers may use of outbound proxy. Okay, uh, in that case, you must know the IP address and the associated port. The extension number that will be assigned to the door phone and the corresponding password. In some cases, the user authentication name will also be recorded. Then you enter the web guide of the door phone to enter that information. Select the SIG account to be used. Remember that the door phone has two SIG accounts available. Then enter the data associated with the SIG server, and that will be all. When registered, the door phone will be shown in the line status file. Okay. The second configuration case is shown below. It is a function correctly widely used by all products. Now, as host pub. This function is included in all our products and can be used using a SIG server and also without the need from a SIG. In the, in the example we see on the screen, the SIG host pop scenario is shown where the SIG server is involved. On one side, we have different side, different SIG stations associated with the with IP phones. And on the other side, we will have the station uh, 6001, okay, which will be associated with the SIG host registration server. To this host box server with station 6001, different host box clients will be registered. Each one with an associated SIG host box station. The intention with this is that the four devices that are inside the SIG hotspot can share the same SIG account 6001, okay, and can communicate with the other station that outside the hotspot. In this way, the administrator of the SIG server can save resources uh, since they will be sharing the same SIG station on four, four different devices and also take advantage of functionalities associated with the ringing group. Um, he means that by calling a station 6001, the call can ring on four different devices simultaneously. In addition, the client of the host box server will also be able to communicate with, uh, with each other uh, without having to use the SIG station granted by the SIG server seeing each hotspot line will have an associated hotspot station. Here is the configuration that must be done uh, to archivate the scenario shown in the previous slide. As a first tick step, the SIG account must be registered to the device that will work as a hotspot server. The steps to configure the SIG account are the same as we, say we saw a few uh, slides back, okay? The second step is to go the SIG hotspot session. The use of the function is enabled. In hotspot mode, it selects uh, the type of monitor, refers to how the call will be played when entering uh, hotspot server. It can be broadcast or multicast based on the example we select in, in broadcast type, okay? Then the monitor adder is defined, uh, which will be the others associated with the hotspot server. A specific IP range is handled, shown on the screen. And then the local port that will be associated with that IP defined for the hotspot server is defined. That port also handles a specific range that is shown on the screen. Above 1024 is recommended. That will be the necessary configuration on the hotspot server side. 
Now, as a third step, uh, the host pop clients must be configured for this. The web guide of each client is entered and configured as shown on the screen. From the sick host pop session, the use of host pop is enabled. Client mod is select, okay? Type of monitor in broadcast and enter the IP and port associated with the host pop server, which was configured in step dots. Step two, sorry. After performing stick with all the hotspot clients, uh, the hotspot server will be entered again uh, from the hotspot manage station session. All the clients that request the server to register will be displayed. The clients uh, you want to select are select from the look main station if session, and then the move to manage option is select. Okay. After this, all the detailed information of each of the accepted clients will be displayed in the session manager station info with their respective host pop station number. The rigging mode can also be defined by, by the host pop server as shown on the screen. But in AWS within sequential ringing or group ringing throughout the old auction. General, generally, uh, this last option is used for reading group SNRs. So as you can see, uh, it really is a fairly simple configuration from which you can take advantage of the device um, with a big in different SNRs. The SIG hotspot function can be used uh, without the need for a SIG server, as shown on the screen. Uh, we can make use of the hotspot group option. The configuration is also carried out from the web guide of the device that we work as a server and also from the web guide of each device that we work as a hotspot client. In this scenario, we will have a group number represent uh, according to the example by 5000, okay? Uh, each hotspot client will, be, will have a specific station so that they can communicate with clients. As you can see on the screen, this scenario is within use um, in interactions within the door phone and different indoor units to send the audio and video. Okay, after sorry, uh, after performing the host pop registration procedure, book for the server and the clients, you must enter the web guide of the host pop server. Okay, um, from the host pop manage station session, you will select the clients that will belong to the group, a signing, a name, and a station to each member. And then you name uh, the group so it can be defined, identified uh, when calling the group number. The call uh, will ring on all members simultaneously. This is like uh, summary everything we have when talking about the hotspot function and comparing book solutions since a six server is in Wolf and without using a six server. It is important to clarify something that tends to come from customer. Um, the hotspot function is not intended uh, to replace or act as, as a SIG server. Uh, they are completely different solutions. As, as we all know, a SIG server is developed to provide uh, many more basic and advanced functionalities as well as to manage incoming and uh, incoming and not going. Uh, calls within a station and external, and external numbers, and also to manage the use for, of analog trunks, C trunks, and digital trunks. Uh, well, the hotspot is only limited to the scope that we have presented the possibility of finding uh, ring groups within different stations, which are which are a six server. Now we have on the screen information that we have already been talking about, uh, talking about such as the configuration of the speed dial button and remote password, which are typical scenarios in the use of door phone in integration with indoor units and IP phones. On the indoor unit side, uh, you must enter the web guide to configure the DCSK that will have the extension number of the door phone associated with, for example, uh, 1002, and you can also associate another. This is this is K for the door opening action where in DTMF type um, 
the, the value file, the password defined on the side of the door form must be placed, as shown on the right side of the slide. In this way, pressing the DC is 1K will make the call to the door form. And after establishing the call, the user of the indoor unit will press the DC is 3K to enable the open door remotely. The door form offers the option of importing uh, the list of contacts in page, okay, in a simple way, as shown on the screen through a file in CCB format where the list of user, the list of users who will have access to the door form is housed. The information that must be added to the CCB format is the same as that shown in the ASS rule session, for example, name, ID, car state, department, position, type, location, number, for wedding number, access code, and profile. The ASS session is used by the administrator to manually uh, aid users individually. After the users are at the they will be displayed in the access table with the information that has been added to H1. Okay, um, as mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, the door phone allows access to our RFID cards. They are there are different methods that the administrator can choose to activate the RFID cards for each user, as shown on the screen. The first method is used to wait cards to start normally. Normally, in, from the web page, okay, uh, EEG setting features, car reader working mode, option select normal, okay, uh, click car reader will back to the normal status. The using records can be found from the door card table list and also through in the web guide page, okay, uh, the car using option. The card reader will, be, will enter the user, the using status, uh, use new card to touch card reading through induction area. And then you might hear the confirm indication tone from the device. The big stake can to add more cards, okay? The second method used to add cards for professionals. Um, use is use, use your admin card to touch card reading induction area. Um, you will enter using car status, uh, use new car to touch car reading induction area, and you might hear the confirm the confirm indication tone from the device. Uh, repeat step two uh, to add more cars. Use this admin card to touch car reading induction area again. You will go back to normal working status. And the three method uh, used to add few cars. Just input cards number in page and then click. Okay. With this information, we could make the agenda schedule for today's webinar. I hope it's of great benefit to everyone. If you have any question, please let us know throughout the question and answer chat. My colleagues Tommy and I, we gladly will be support in your dues. Thanks again for your assistance and thanks to the entry boy based supply logistic and support provider. Excellent. Thank you so much, Hector. Tommy, thank you for your time today, too. Really appreciate it. No problem. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time.